Folks, my next guest made history this year as one of the first two Muslim American women elected to Congress and the very first woman of color to represent the great state of Minnesota. Please welcome Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Nice to, n- nice to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet you. I think, uh, I, think we, I think we booked you a long time ago <laughs> to be on the show. We've had yeah. this conversation for a long time. It's really um, hard maybe right to when get you first got into Congress. Yeah. yeah. Hard to get up here it's, from New it's York? It's really hard. Yeah. They got trains now. Yeah. You love it. And a lot has happened mm-hmm. uh, since you took office. Right. Okay. A lot of talk about you. Yeah. Uh, in, in the news, in the right wing media, among the Democrats. Uh, you've become a lightning rod. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly for the people on the right, and for some Democrats, too. Would you like me to go through the timeline of the lightning rodding, or would you like to explain how you perceive becoming a lightning rod for people? Because that's a big part of your story right off the bat in your your service. Yeah, I mean, if, if you think about, you know, historically, um, where our nation is at right now, there are many um, members of our community that their identities are a lightning rod, right? They're, right? They've become, they're being used as political football. We are talking about immigrants, you're talking about refugees, women of color, people of color, minorities. Uh, and I just happen to Muslims have... Muslims specifically. Muslims specifically. And I just ha- happen to embody all of those identities. Mm-hmm. And so it's easy for, for this to kind of be self-explanatory. Well, uh, you were you were criticized for saying some things that uh, some people on the right, specifically, but also some Democrats, saw as being possibly anti-Semitic. Mm. You got some support from uh, some people. I think Glenn Greenwald might have tweeted in support to you, and you tweeted back to him that the attacks on you were all about the Benjamins, meaning APAC and a lobbyist for the state of Israel. By saying that, you were accused of anti-Semitism again. Um, what does it? You then apologized at the insistence of Nancy Pelosi. So it's not just Republicans who had problems with what you had said or done. It was also some Democrats. What was that process like? What was that like to um, be a cudgel like that, being used as a political cudgel right when you began your service? I mean, it, this this whole process really has been um, one of of growth for me, right? Mm-hmm. Because. You know, there. I I was having a conversation with um, my predecessor, uh, um, Congressman Keith Ellison, who's now Attorney General Mm -hmm. uh, Keith Ellison, and we were we were talking about some some things that are historically offensive Mm -hmm. to African Americans, Mm -hmm. and he's going through a list, and I said. I mean, I wouldn't be offended by those things. And he said, well, you're an African immigrant. None of those things hold history for you. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes when you are um, speaking, you might not understand the historical context of some of the words that you might use and the kind of pain that it might incite for people. And so in in this process, I'm learning that um, everything is not as simple as we might think we might want to state it. Um, and as I've said to you know my constituents, to my colleagues, when you tell me that you are pained by something that I say, I will always listen and I will acknowledge your pain. It's the same that I expect. So when you have people on Fox News that question whether I'm actually American or I put America first, I expect my colleagues to also say that's not okay. Like that, they should that condone that morning. and call that out. Exactly. On the on the on the, on the friendly right. Friends or, or, Fox when, and friends or when or when people morning, call they, uh... me a terrorist or when yeah. people say you know that um, because I I I'm a Muslim, I'm an immigrant, I'm a refugee, mm-hmm. that I can't have any loyalty to our country. I took an oath. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution. I am as American as everyone else is. And and this kind of double standard really is is quite, you know, um, offensive and is very much embedded in a lot of our culture these days where you will have people get 
come after minorities for things that they say they might have insinuated. Mm -hmm. But no one goes after um, people like uh, the, the folks on Fox and Friends that actually say those words. It's not about insinuation, mm -hmm. right? They actually said that I might not be an American, my loyalties might not be to this country. Mm -hmm. But I get called out, they don't. They get to I mean, keep I their would show. Say, I would say uh, that goes as far as me too. I was, when I, when I heard that you had been, um, you had said that uh, you believe that Stephen Miller is a white nationalist mm -hmm. and you got a lot of heat for that. I thought, I, haven't I said time. that? Yeah. Haven't I actually? Don't we make jokes about that all the time on the show? Yeah. But so, I mean, it's unfair because you get attacked, right. A, because of some of the history you already have in terms of being a cudgel in the area of anti Semitism, people, yeah. accusations, regardless of your, of your apology. But also, I think because you're a Muslim, because you're a woman, because you're a person of color, mm -hmm. you're given less latitude than somebody like me. Right. I mean, Congressman uh, uh, Mark Bocan actually said that, that last year he called the Stephen Miller white supremacist, and no one has better than I. And you see this outrage um, when I speak the truth. Everyone else's truth is allowed, but my truth can never be. We got to go here uh, in, in just a second, but uh, just before I go, I just want to show this. This is a really lovely picture. This is you, and uh, the speaker is wearing you. And, and is this your family? Yeah, it is. Oh, let me see. Yes. Back in Minnesota. It's my 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 daughter. It's my son. Now, uh, my Nancy father. Pelosi is here, you know, swearing you in. Yes. She she said that you should have apologized. She uh -huh. asked you to apologize. Okay. She and other members of both the Republican and the Democratic Party have said to new members, um, you, uh, Rashida Tlaib, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a lot of new, outspoken, um, uh, quite um, uh, noted new members of the Congress, to basically slow down, don't do too much, backbench it, See how everything works, you know, find out where the bathrooms are and you know and where where the copying machine is before you start making waves. What do you say to those people who say go slow? Ah. I mean, I think Nancy knows this very uh, well. Women have been told to go slow and not be seen and not be heard for many years. Um, and she wouldn't have made it to where she is if she did. Uh, and it's certainly um, the case for a minority women, and the three of us are, are minorities and people of color. We are not there to be quiet. We are not there to be invisible. We, we are there. Um, to, to follow the lead of people like Congressman John Lewis and make good trouble. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Congresswoman Ilan Omar, everybody. We'll be right back.